so recent developments, a few last few hours, have prompted this video. And it's narcissism and what to do about it. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do about it to help the situation. Some people have had greater degrees of success. Most people have very little, if any. Um, in this case, I've had none for the particular person in my life that is extremely, extremely infected with this psychological disease. I call it a disease because I'm being nice. It's a personality trait. And it's especially hard when it's a parent. And it's really hard when it's two parents. And it, you almost, it gets to the point where you have to do something drastic to change the situation. We're all a little bit narcissist. But if we feed that animal, it takes over everything in our life. If we deny that animal, then it won't grow and it won't take over. This is denying, narcissism is of the flesh, it's denying the flesh and giving power, more power and authority to the spirit. It takes effort. A lot of people have said that hell is uncontrolled and unchecked narcissism. I tend to agree with that. That means people who are narcissists that don't think they do anything wrong are going to be faced with an eternity of being reminded just how much they are a narcissist and it's going to be used against them. What is narcissism though? So the medical definition of narcissism from dictionary.com says, it's an erotic pleasure derived from contemplation or admiration of one's own body or self, especially as a fixation on or a regression to an infantile stage of development. The attribute of the human psyche characterized by admiration of oneself, but within normal limits. Now, extreme narcissism goes way, way past that. To the point that the person will openly try to destroy their family and the people around them in different forms of manipulation and will constantly redirect blame when everyone in the room sees them start the problem and when they're called out on it, will completely ignore it, block it out, shut down, not think about it, talk over you, complain about things that you're literally trying to do for them, that saying nobody does them for them, so they don't have to face that about themselves. Wikipedia says, Narcissism is the pursuit of gratification from vanity or egotistic admiration of one's idealized self-image and attributes. Have you ever heard somebody say, I'm an empath, yet they show no empathy towards anyone else. Yeah, that's narcissism. The term originated from Greek mythology where the young Narcissus fell in love with his own image reflected in a pool of water. Narcissism is a concept in psychoanalytic theory, which, popular, which was popularly introduced in Sigmund Freud's essay on narcissism in 1914. The American Psychiatric Association has listed the classification narcissistic Narcissistic Personality Disorder in its Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders since 1968, drawing on the historical concept of megalomania, which most of this draws from. Megalomania is the worst version, I believe, of narcissism. Uh, because it, it goes... Narcissism, usually in its normal forms, tends to stay with the person and generally can be dealt with fairly easily. I believe megalomania is like five times worse. Uh, nobody can deal with it. And they have no natural affection for anybody. It is only, they only use people to make themselves feel good about themselves. Whether it's family or friends, it doesn't matter who it is. They use people to make them feel good about themselves. A person like this typically is, is really in a very heavy place. It's funny because it's a heavy place of self-hatred. Yet it's admiration of themselves weird if you have somebody in your family that's a narcissist you know what I'm talking about especially if it's gone to the nth degree like what we talked about yesterday especially when it's at the point where the person you literally are looking at them watching them self-destruct and trying to tell them about it 
and you use every way other than putting your hands on them to get them to, to recognize it, and they absolutely refuse up to the point of walking away. Going out of their way to change the subject, trying to redirect it back onto you. It is the worst thing in the world to try to deal with, especially if it's a parent. I've already had to kick one parent out of my life because of the disgusting level they went through. It was bad. I don't even want to get into it on here because it was very bad. And they still don't realize what they've done wrong. But now I have another one that's doing the same thing. And I, I'm not, I don't want to watch them destroy their family. Yet that's exactly what they're doing. They can't see it. They can't see what they're doing wrong. They refuse to see what they're doing wrong. And won't acknowledge the mistake that they made. It goes on to say, Narcissism is also considered a social or cultural problem. It is a factor in trait theory used in various self-report inventories of personalities such as Millen Clinical uh, Multiaxle Inventory. It is one of the three dark triadic personality traits. So you see there is even a evil trinity also. The others being psychopathy and, uh, what is that, Machiavellianism except in the sense of primary narcissism or healthy self-love. So we're all a little bit nar narcissist. It's, that's the okay version. Narcissism is usually considered a problem in a person's, gr person's or group's relationships with self or others. Narcissism is not the same as egocentrism or egoism. So again, egocentrism and egoism are the extreme versions of narcissism. Typical narcissism, we, we all have a, a level of it. You, you love yourself, you, you care about yourself, you take care of yourself. When it steps into extreme forms like megalomania, egocentrism, and egoism, that's where the damage and the problem comes from. But most people don't know about those terms, so we just use narcissism. How do you show a person that's a narcissist in this level, the extreme levels, how do you show them or get them to see it so you can help them because if it's especially a family member we want to help them right how do you get them to see it if they won't admit they've done anything wrong it's impossible and they especially after what i saw today they go out of their way to put it back on another person now in my particular instance and some of you guys maybe can relate you come to a point where you're like i don't want to turn this into a situation where I'm showing dishonor to my parents because the Bible says not to but I can't live with it either what do I do you, you have to make a decision and it may not be a really good decision so the Bible has scripture on this in 2 Timothy 3 1-7 through it says but understand this that in the last days there will be times of difficulty for people will be lovers of self lovers of money proud arrogant, abusive disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. When it's apparent, what do you do? Avoid them, just like 2 Timothy 3 says. I'm reading through this list, and with the particular situation that I was just part of a few hours ago today with a parent I was able to check everything off this list now sometimes what they say and do will look like good but when you know what the underlying meaning is or the underlying uh, driving force behind why they're doing it then you see where the narcissism comes in and like I said it's the extreme forms of it to the point that they willingly destroy the relationships with their family, yet will never ever take any blame for it and will put it back off on them, making it everyone else's fault. How, how do you fix this? You can't. Romans 16, 17 through 19 says, I appeal to you brothers to watch out for those who cause divisions. I witnessed that today also and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. This person that I am talking about claims to know Jesus, yet I can't even get them to say his name out loud. 
There's no salvation there. They'll wear, they'll wear, they'll wear a t-shirt with Jesus on it, but they won't say his name. They won't confess him. They won't admit him. They'll tell lots of stories, but it's, it's, it's nothing. Avoid them, for such persons do not serve our Lord Christ but their own appetites. And by smooth talk and flattery, manipulation, they deceive the hearts of the naive. For your obedience is known to all, so that I will rejoice over you. But I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent as to what is evil. And innocent as to what is evil. Well, we're not all innocent as to what is evil. So at some point, we've got to address a situation like this. The reason why I'm doing this video isn't to complain about my situation. is to help others of you who have posted comments. And reading between the lines, it looks like you're dealing with very similar situations. There is no easy way to deal with this. Let's do a couple of more. 1 Peter 5, 5 through 6. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. If it's your parents, how do you address that properly without... Like, if I would have not said anything years ago, I would be divorced and not have my children in my life right now. My life would be ruined. And it would have been due to my parents' act, direct activities. Where do you draw the line? When does it stop? Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time, he may exalt you. What I find in the situation, particularly that I'm in, and you guys may be able to relate to this, is that I'm in a situation where I've got to remove individuals from my life to keep from things getting worse. To keep from getting into sin. He says, be angry, but don't sin. Yet... How, how do you address a situation like this? You know, it, it's the lesser of two evils in this case. I want to honor my mother and father, but yet if I keep them in my life, my life's over. I mean, there's been times it's gotten close to the point of suicide. And not just me. Um, so, what do you do in this case? It's so hard to make a decision on. Philippians 2, 1-30, we're going to close after this. So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind, doing nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. If we're doing that, the people are manipulating and using us to give more out of us, what benefit are we to them? At some point, oh, my wife said the doctor, at some point, when do you draw the line to keep them from sinning more concerning you? You know, if I willingly and knowingly allow somebody to keep doing that stuff, am I not partaking in in agreeing with what they're doing that's sinful? Should I not stop the situation with the if, if it's only one way to do it, to keep it from going further, to keep them from, con, from condemning themselves more as it pertains to me? I can't help other situations, but as it pertains to me, is that not the proper way or to respond to a situation like this? I mean, if you're in a relationship, well, what the Bible says, if you with, live with a contentious woman, and a contentious woman is somebody who likes to start fights and arguments. Uh, uh. My wife's still texting me. Um, he says, move. You can't divorce her for that reason, but you move into the corner of your attic. You get away from her. You separate yourself. It keeps from going to sin. It keeps you from getting angry and sinning. You know, this can get bad, depending on the situation. Uh, really bad. And we don't want it to go to that point. 
if I had to give any advice, and guys, please read the Bible on this. And I'm going off what my personal situation is at the moment. Eliminate the threat. You've got to put up a barrier, put up a wall, and shut the stuff down. Because it's you're you're not by allowing them to keep doing that to you and in your life, you're not helping them. Especially if they're at the point where they refuse to listen. If you stop it, I think, and this is like in my personal case, I think you have a better chance of reaching them. Because at some point they're gonna come to the realization of I did this and I need to fix this. Now at one point on, for one parent concerning me personally that hasn't been the case it actually just kept going downhill um, I couldn't watch that particular person drink themselves to death and I told them that so I had to remove myself remove them from my life remove that myself from that situation the other one I don't know what to do because I've done everything I've tried reasoning and you, a lot of you guys can relate to what I'm telling you right now I've tried reasoning with them I've tried being nice. In fact, I was being very nice here, trying to defuse a situation, and it actually incurred wrath onto me from a fight I wasn't even involved in. Um, and then it escalated. So I left. I removed myself from the situation before it got worse. Um, and it, it didn't stop at that point. Uh, I found out later that it kept going. So... At some point, you've got to draw a line in the sand. You've got to eliminate the issue. You've got to shut it down. You can't... If you have somebody that is in your life that is doing something like, say, they're doing drugs, do you keep them, let them live in your house? Well, no. Because you don't want them to influence the people around you. That's part of your job, as, especially as a parent, as head of a household, is I don't want this in my house because this is going to cause problems. Well, the same thing applies to your life. You, know, you don't willingly walk into a lava pit you see the warnings, you get away from it. You don't willingly, you know, walk into gunfire. You see the warnings, you get away from it. Now, each person that deals with something like, like this has to deal with it on their level. But when you've done everything you can and you know nothing else that's going to help, you've talked to friends, you've talked to their friends, you've talked to other people, you've talked to professionals, and nothing has worked. Your, what other recourse do you have? You have one recourse, and that is to eliminate them from your life and have nothing more to do with them. And you have to be honest with them, and you have to tell them that. If they receive it, they receive it. If they don't, they don't. Just like God is going to close the door at some point for the tribulation to start, you may have to close the door at some point. It sucks. You don't want to do it. You know, I really want to get these. I'm pretty sure one is saved, but I don't know where their heart is. It's not where it should be. The other one, I don't see anything there for salvation. When do you stop? When do you draw the line? At what point do you quit? Because if it's bleeding over into other people's lives that are in your family, wife, kids, you know, friends, stuff like that, how much longer do you allow it to go? I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer on this. But in order to in order to squash this situation, it's coming to the point where I'm going to have to make a drastic decision. And like I said, many of you guys know, and I'm kind of just venting here, but many, many of you guys know what I'm talking about. Y'all have had to deal with this. You've had to deal with this a lot. And there's no easy way to do it. So if you've been struggling with this, I kind of feel like maybe some people are. This video might really relate to you. If you're struggling with something like this, if you have somebody in your life that's like this, then go to the scriptures and go into prayer. But at some point, and how long do you let it keep going? At some point, you've just got to put a stop to it and eliminate it and get it out of your life. Just like 2 Timothy says, avoid such people. I literally read through this list and I could check off everything. And with this particular person. With both of them, actually. So anyway, 
hopefully this is a benefit to somebody. Hopefully this helped you. Um, hopefully this will answer questions maybe that you've had and will steer you towards, not don't, don't trust what I say, steer you towards helping the situation you are in to keep it from being a negative on the people around you. Like I said, there's just no easy answer to any of this. We do what we can and ask the Lord to forgive us for everything else. All right, I love you guys. Like I said, I hope this was a benefit. I'll see you guys in the next video.